Well, once again, greeting to all of you. Um, obviously, my uh, the people that are on Zoom that are with me right now and people that are in my lounge. And also, which is coming to my attention, people that check in after the, after the, the actual meeting, because it goes onto our website and people replay the message. Even some of the folk that are on, that can't get on today. There's a couple of apologies today from around the world. Um, and I know they'll watch, it, watch this message on, on Monday. And, and there's always good messages that come out of this ministry, whether it's from Val or from Carl or from me, whoever. God's word never returns. Boy, okay. So I want to just share with you today. I want to speak from my heart. I prayed heavily over this message. It's not an easy message I'm bringing because I brought it a couple, good couple of years ago, but I've got a different slant on this message. And um, it's the same word of God, by the way. But it, it's something that's quite disturbing and revealing, encouraging, exhorting, and challenging, which is always what this ministry is, is all about. So before we go much further, let me just open it in prayer from myself to you. Father God, we thank you for today. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee. Amen. All right. We've got lots of scriptures to go through. And I'm going to actually just share something with all you brothers and sisters out there before we even kick off. Early in the morning, you know, Joe and I are always, well, we're pretty early risers. I think you all know that. And the Lord just showed me something. I want to show you guys something. You know, all those guys that say that the Old Testament's not relevant. You know, all those guys that say oh, that's history or the, the New Ages or theological, theological giants of the world. Well, let me show you something. Here's my Bible. This is the Old Testament. <laughs> this is the New Testament. <laughs> Bit of a difference, isn't it? So don't tell me this is not relevant. Because I think 90% of my scriptures today are coming out of this side. Like somebody once said to me, well, you know, Pastor Buchan, I, I, I really don't know if I believe that. Uh, because, you know, I said, is it in the Bible? Yeah, it's in the Bible. But I don't know if I can really believe that. I said, well, why don't you tear it out and throw it away? Uh, oh, 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 I can't do that. It's, 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 it's the Bible. I said, yeah, it's the Bible. So if it's in the Bible, it's relevant, isn't it? Of course. Oh, yeah, we didn't see it that way. I said, oh, good. I'm glad you opened your eyes. If it's in the Bible, it's always relevant. Right. <laughs> Yesterday, um, Diane came and joined me uh, and walked in, in, in London with me, looking for that lost sheep and that lost coin, that lost soul. Um, um, every, every Saturday morning when, when I get up and after I've had my tea and prayed with Joe and we break bread, well, this time we didn't because um, Diane and I broke bread in a lovely park just off uh, Embankment Underground Station. A lot of you must know where that is. And... Um, you know, we, we're so blessed because this ministry, and, and Diane, I want to share this with you. So you must be very proud. Okay, you can really, you can do this now. You know, we go out to the biggest congregation every Saturday morning in the world. We go to nine and a half million people. That's why the moustache is always right, the haircut's right. Aftershave is just spot on. I'm dressed properly because I'm going to God's people. I'm going to the the rust and the rubbish and the scourge of the world that nobody wants to go to. We're not going to churches. I mean, we walked past the Savoy and I said, I said, to, I said, Dad, you should go to have tea there. We have our coffee break, you see, and we'll take a photograph and send it to Joe. Well, that'll just blow her right out of his room because I know what she'll say, suffering for Jesus again. <laughs> but we just walked on past the Savoy Hotel, didn't we? But just backtracking a bit now, getting onto a serious note. Um, I got on the wrong underground or she got onto the wrong, whatever. But she, she went that way instead of coming this way. So I was waiting for her outside Embankment Underground, right opposite Starbucks, where a lot of you people have walked with me. Costas is on the left-hand side. And I was waiting and waiting. And then I, I started to look at people walking past me. And, you know, I always look at people in, in spiritually. 
and, and with eyes that I had to watch myself. Um, I was, I was, I looked at this one right hand side, and down came this this young girl, and I actually had to look twice because she had a, a top and a bottom on that was see through, and. All I could see was her underwear, and there wasn't much of that on. Now, I wasn't ogling, I wasn't goggling because I don't do that. I, I thought to myself, did I, did I, I actually looked the second time, I thought, I thought I didn't see right, Phil. So she carried on walking, and then another young girl came, they are young folks. I'm building the platform. Just walk with me. Another young girl comes down. Nice top on, the young girl, and she's got a pair of slacks on, Joe. And I thought she had, somebody had cut her pants or something. Because you know what Venetian blinds look like? So as she walked, everything opened. Walking past me, and she had no underwear. I thought to myself, so I thought, okay, I'll just, you know, put this on. So right. And then coming up the road, this is the world now, you see. This, this is where we are. Our children. Two young men holding hands. Kissing each other. They walk out past me. But you know, I want to share this with you all now. Because this is where I'm coming to now. I felt absolute compassion sadness but many other things i saw there that drunkards falling around people vomiting i felt absolute compassion and love for these lost people you, you know uh, uh, quite a few told diane and me yesterday that's a fairy tale would you want to tell us or we don't believe it we're not interested you know, um, my heart, I don't get angry. Yeah, you know, sometimes I want to shake them because I love them so much. But it's, you can't do that, you see. And I such a hurt in my heart because this life we live in is so short. But the next life, you, you know, that, that famous tennis player from Deutschland, where we used to live for many years, Boris Becker. Now, old Boris did some silly things with his tax man and, and he got sentenced and he's not far down the road from where we're living. And, um, you know, all the furor and John McEnroe saying, hey, he misses his buddy and he's going to go and visit him. And then uh, Sue Barker, yeah, oh, sorry, you're not here with us, uh, Boris. And, and that's fine. I mean, you know, he made a mistake and he's, he's gone to jail. But, you know, it's all past now, but Boris has still got two more years to sit there. Two years. But Boris will probably come out in 16 months with good behavior. So he's coming out. But unless those people I was looking at walking down the street before my eyes repent and come back to Jesus Christ, they're going somewhere. You don't come out of. You don't come back. Because it is forever. So there's the stage. What am I going to be talking about? The fear of God. Now, I prayed about this. This is, this is the message I'm bringing you guys today. It is very encouraging. Because the word of God is always encouraging. And he always warns us. The fear of God in this world we're living in. It's gone. When people can behave like I saw in the, in the streets of London, and um, we can talk about Johannesburg, we can talk about Toronto, we can talk about the fear of God is gone because they don't have the fear of what I've just said. Let's get into a scripture. Let's go firstly to Psalm 111, verse 10. 
And you're going to see the thread I'm working with all the way through. <coughs> Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments. And praise endures forever. The only way to become truly wise is to fear God. And I put in brackets, revere. It's another word for the English word fear, revere. Because people think, oh, I can't worship a God that's going to beat me or hit me or give me cancer. No, he doesn't do any of that. You know, if you, if you fear God or if, if, you, if you revere a friend, I've, I've got everybody on this screen is a friend of mine and in this lounge. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to lie about you. I'm not going to talk badly about you because I love you. That is the meaning of fear is if you love somebody enough, you're not going to behave in a manner that's dis displeasing to that person. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. Of course I know I'm right. It's not a fear. The Bible doesn't talk about a fear of, of a God that punishes us all that he does punish you. There's no two ways about it. You're going to hear just now, but there's always a way out. He always gives us a way out, not like the world we live in. You know, the fear of God, brothers and sisters, is, is like reverence, like love. Now we're going to just go down the road a wee bit together. Do you remember when you first gave your life to Jesus? You remember how, how much you loved him? You, you, you fell in love with him more than your wife. Because it's your first love. Right? You were on fire. You, you know what? We, 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 we had Bible study meetings. I was the first there, man. Uh, we would start singing. I'd be singing. We would say grace in the, the wimpies and people come and say, where are they? Yeah. You know, when I started going to church, when I gave my life to Jesus, in my brother's millie field. Uh, we started going to church. And now those days, when we went to church, I used to put on my sports jackets. I was still a golf professional. Put on my tie. I was super duper smart because I'm going to the house of God. I couldn't wait to get into the church. Couldn't wait. Fraser, Sheena, Kirsty, Joe, a little bit later, we were dressed to the nines because we were going to the temple. Now, it's not about dressing. I'm just using an example of how I used to uh, get it. I, I used to say to the staff, you know, we had a big pro shop, busy golf club. Here's the keys. I'm off the church. See you when I get back. Couldn't give, a, I couldn't care if Gary Player pitched up because I'm going to church. And then the pastor would say to me, lovely guy. Fergus, I, I, would you like to come with me to so and so church? Because I, I need somebody to come with you. Yeah, shush, you're asking me. Off I'd go, I'd carry his Bible. And I got to sit in the front of the church. You'd go up and preach and come back, and I'd go home with him. Go to jail. You know what happened? We were in this massive church. They even mentioned my name. Excited. When is he going to ask me again? And then you then you then you get a then you get a guy that's a, a missionary, and he says to you, some of these young people, "Do you want to come on a mission with me? Do you want to come and do some ministry out of the church?" Pah! All the young guys, me included, and of course, when that mission field goes to the Seychelles or Mauritius, we are chock a block full. We are full. But then sometimes you get asked to go to the Luangwa Valley. Or you go to northern Uganda. Or you go to other places. You go into a squatter camp. Well, 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 well I'll let Sanso go. Can't make that one. Then things start. Do you remember when, when, when you backslid? No, I'm not talking about any one of you. And then some evangelist, some teacher, some 
Pastor came along and said something and it just pricked that heart and you just came back and you came back crying. You came back. You came back. Because you had the love for Jesus Christ. You feared the Lord. Where, 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 does that, where does that leave us now? The fear of the Lord. When you tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us, and a man looks me in the face, and there's a witness sitting with me, he says, that's a fairy tale, sir. I said, really, son? Really? You know, I do believe, I really do believe, the falling away, which is spoken about in 2 Thessalonians. I'm not going to read it because you can read it later or you know what it is. In chapter 2, verse 3, the falling away is the church. Mm. All right, yeah, good. Those that know, yeah. The church has fallen away. It's, it, it, it's, mm. it's, there's not much left now because when you see what is, was a, what is allowed in the churches today, mm. I'm not here to beat up on churches today, by the way, because we move, we're moving on. I'm, I'm here to talk to you. And to me, when you see what happens in churches today, there is no fear of God. There can't be because Satan has got in behind the pulpit. Because of what happens behind the pulpit and what is preached from the pulpit is not of God. There's no fear of God left. When, when, when you, you go to a church, Where a church marries men and men and women and women. A basic doctrinal issue. When men's traditions are more important than the word of God. What did Jesus say? I shared with Joe this morning. Jesus Christ said, your traditions and your laws make it impossible for a man to enter the kingdom of heaven. We, we, during the COVID outbreak, this ministry never stopped preaching the gospel in the streets of London. Never. These, 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 that's why I'm very proud of this ministry. They came walking with me. The streets were empty. I mean, Philip, what, he's a Londoner. So we were walking down one of the main streets. He says, Fergus, I've, I've never seen this before in my life. But we feared God more than the laws of man, and we went. We reach many, 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 many people. By the grace, by the way. Because the zest and the zeal was there that I spoke about earlier. Because the Lord Jesus tells us very clearly, the harvest is white. But the workers are falling away. You know, the Bible keeps talking about a remnant. So today again, Israel, a remnant, Scotland, South Africa. A remnant. Because brothers and sisters, people treat the church now rightfully so as a joke anything goes Any, as long as you give your life to jesus you live like you like live like you like just like i saw those young folk walking down the streets of london i thought to myself dear god do they know what but who's told them who's prepared to go and tell them listen turn from your wicked ways because you're going to hell you, you're going to a place you're going to be forever Well, you know, we might upset them. Ah, okay. Well, you know, you might get you might get put in jail for hate speech. Oh, really? Let's be staying in the Old Testament. Let's go to with me, please, to the book of 
Ecclesiastes. Love that book. Now, where am I? I've got it. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, chapter 12. I'm going to read 13 and 14 to you. You know, I, I, I take this. I'm actually in, in my, my spirit. I'm trembling this morning. You know, I was listening to a song this morning, Joanne and I, and I never heard of this guy until she told me who he was, and, and she's got it on our tapes, and I was listening to Dallas Holmes. Yes, Why I like Dallas Holmes so much is because he, he walked with, um, for five years, um, that man of God that's in heaven now. Oh, my goodness, the New York man. But Dallas Holmes was, 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 was singing about a song that he said, Jesus got off the cross and came to, to earth to save a wretch like me. The least I can do is go out and tell people what he's done for me. Mm. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Now, yeah, we're going to read about the wisest man on earth. Uh, he made big mistakes, by the way. We all know that. He actually brought Israel down eventually. But when the Lord said to him, what do you want? What gifts do you want? What did he ask for? Wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the book of Ecclesiastes and Proverbs is full of wisdom and warnings. Mm -hmm. So let me read to you verses 13 and 14, the last two verses in, 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 in the book of Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now he's talking about his whole summary of life. His whole summary of, of your existence in, in this world. Okay. He says, the first word he says, fear God <laughs> and keep his commandments. Not the 660 that the foolish Jew has put into place, the 10 commandments. They are still relevant to me. To this day, you can take them out of the schools. You can take them out of your uh, judiciary, your, your, your churches. You, but for me, for this is man's all. And then verse 14 says, for God will bring every work into judgment. Mm. Oh, ho, ho, here we go. Put the seatbelts on, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Ah. Fear God, all people will have to stand before God, be judged for what they did in this life. Mm -hmm. That is, that is coming. That you must be sure of, whether you believe or whether you don't believe. You're going to meet before him. Um, my brother Phil was telling me he's been called up for jury uh, selection. And we were just talking about how it works. In, he's going to that famous place the old Bailey and that's man-made laws he's got to be wise because you know he's a juror now and he, he'll make the right decisions because we trust Phil and Phil knows God but you know there, there'll be loopholes these guys these, these lawyers are clever guys hey the Lord talks about them in the Bible you know that eh? not in a good light either by the way and they'll connive this and connive that and what you know he, he was so drunk, he didn't really know what he was doing when he broke his wife's jaw. You know, he was so drunk. And because of that, he's a young man and he deserves a life. And we'll, we'll, But it's not going to happen with the other judge. <laughs> yeah. The judge we're going to. You're not going to say anything, actually. You know that. In fact, I don't even think you're going to be standing before him. You're going to be on your face. Crying. When he talks to you, because he says, I love you so much. My son and my daughter, the word of God will judge you, not me. Mm -hmm. So you, they, you know, Fergus, these gay pride people, they really are nice people. Yeah, they, some of them are actually nicer people than Christians. 
So yeah, we'll just we'll just go along. Yeah, they really are. We'll just go along with them, you know, because yeah, I mean, but but we're not going to worry about what God says here. Okay, He's going to say to you, well, Johnny, you agreed with what they were doing. Yeah, she says, good. I'll send you where they are then now. You know, not speaking up. Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer said in 1939, and he was shot two months, he was hung actually, two months before the war ended. He said, not speaking up is a condemnation against you. Mm -hmm. By being quiet, you agree. Oh, that's a tough one. No, no, it's not a tough one. It's, it's here. We're going we're gonna to give an account, brothers and sisters, where the Lord's going to say, how, how did you, how on earth, Johnny and Susan, you loved me so, so much. You were so on fire for 10 years. You got cold. You got tired. You got busy. You got children. You got business. You got friends. I don't see you as often as I'd like to see you with the body anymore, Johnny and Sue. Because slowly, Johnny and Sue are slipping back into the world. So after two or three weeks, gee, you know what? We better go to church. We, be we just better go in quickly. Go to the back. Then, then as they start communion or start, we'll slip out the back. I know that because I've been in church. I was an elder in a church. God's going to say, but, but, but why? I went, what I went through for you in your 72 years that are allotted to you, and maybe 80 if you're strong, maybe, maybe. You were too busy for me. Now we're going to go to a book of instruction. Please go to the book of Proverbs. And it's, um, I'm going to be reading from verse 1. And I'm reading quite a few scriptures to you. So Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28 to 33. And I'm going to have a sip of tea before I read this. And I think you should as well. This is the loving God we serve. This is the God that died for you. This is the God that heals us. This is the God that his ways are to, to prosper us, not to harm us. This is the God I'm talking about now. This is when, when the fear of God leaves you. So leave the building, leave the church, leave, leave your pastor, leave your evangelist, leave your teacher, leave your prophet and your apostle covered in that now. This is you now. Now, this is you. Right. So we're in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 28 to 33. <coughs> then they will call on me, but I will not answer. Because, you know, that's our friend. One thing that really, really annoys me, and it used to annoy me in South Africa, you know, when we used to have those wonderful thunderstorms on the high felt. Mm -hmm. Thunder, oh, that's him moving the furniture around. <laughs> what? What? That's my buddy. You speak like that. You don't fear God. You don't, you don't fear God. Well, listen to what he says. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. So, so it's in the word of God. We've read this. 
he's not talking about the, the prophets of Baal or Balaam. You know, when old, was it Elijah? He, 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 500 he got rid of, didn't he? One hit. He's not talking about the, 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 he's not talking about the unbelievers. He's not talking about the world. He's talking about us. Because they hated knowledge, it did not choose, here it comes, the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel. Um, God sends people to you. Do you know that? Wise, godly men and women to you. And they speak to you. I'm not talking about the prophets of the, of the Testament. I mean, the Old Testament. I'm talking about who were scorned, rebuked, beaten, kicked, killed, and burned, and put down wells, and whatever. I'm talking about this day and age now. They would have none of my counsel and despised my every rebuke, my warnings. Ah, we don't need that. Man. Ach, it's old stuff. Like fairy tales. The God I serve wouldn't talk to me like that. Therefore, now therefore is that powerful English word again. That means it's going to happen. They shall eat the fruit of their own way. What you sow is what you reap. What goes around comes around. What goes up comes down. Aya, aya. Wow. And be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. Complacency is a really, really powerful word in, in ministry. I said to you, your first love, I said the fire that used to be in your belly. Has it got down? Has it got dim? Has it got a little bit down? Is, is that gas light down a little bit? Or is it full on burning? Or are you complacent? But whoever listens to me will dwell safely. Remember what I said earlier at the beginning of this meeting? He always gives us a way out. I love about this God of ours. Why on earth would he die for a wretch like me? Why? Because he loves me. He, he loves those two homosexuals walking down the street. He loves those naked women. He loves for the people living in sin. He, 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 he loves the people that scorn God. But will we listen to him? That's the problem. And we'll be secure without fear of evil. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I, I, I actually exhort you to later on today when you got time you make that nice cup of coffee or the nice cup of your tea sit down and read these scriptures again i'm going to give it to you again proverbs chapter 1 28 to 30 read it and see if there's something in there that's affecting you if it's not hallelujah hey robin it's lacquer then lacquer pride is thinking more highly of our own wisdom and desires than of God's. If we think we have no need of God's direction, we have fallen into foolish and disastrous way. Foolish and disastrous way. When you don't come to the Lord God Almighty, gracious is he, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. 
If you don't come to him with the fear, you've missed it. You've absolutely missed it. With reverence, holiness, righteousness. I say to a lot of my young people that we disciple him, we're making disciples by the grace of God. And there's a new intake coming because I've asked God for a new intake. That's army stuff. That's army talk. Some of you would know what I'm talking about there. You've been in the army, haven't you? For those that have gone out, some of them are really going fire. Some are a bit cold and some have fallen away. Don't know where they are. So we've got the new intake coming now. Fear God. Don't fear. Man is nothing to me. I'm not here to please any man or woman. I'm not. I'm here to, I'm here to please God. I'm here to serve God in all his ways. A sinner that I am, saved by faith through grace, I know that. But man, oh man. Firstly, I want to just get to that throne. Not the other one. The beamer seat. And be judged. Diane and I were talking about, we just want to get in there. And I don't care if I'm a street sweeper because David, the greatest king of Israel, said, if I can just be a doorkeeper, I, 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 can't, I, I, I cannot compare myself to that king. So put me back down in the streets then. Well, there won't be any litter there because people that go to heaven don't throw their rubbish around like this wicked world we live in. <laughs> but I'll have to do something there. Polish the gold street, mate. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Why, why, why was it when the prophets came to the kings, when the prophets came to the nations? That, that, that man I was talking about where this singer sang with for five years, David Wilkerson. I only speak about people that have finished the race. Do you know that? That man finished strong. So I talk about him or mention him. D.L. Moody finished strong. Dr. David Lloyd-Jones finished the race strong. I don't quote anybody that's alive today because I tell you what, the fall is great for those that are sit up high. That's why me, I'll, I'll be on the ground on my knees. It's not so far to fall. That's where I want to be. Just keep, keep me there, Lord. Keep me in the bush. Keep me in the streets. All the smelly ones, the sick ones, the diseased ones, they want to put their arms around us and love us. Now comes the good news. I'm closing now. I'm concluding. Thank goodness. I have another sip of tea, actually. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Funny enough, we're in Old, Old Testament again. Eh? It's strange. People don't believe the Old Testament. That's a history lesson, Pastor Buchan. I find it boring, Fergus. No, really. Well, read this scripture and see how boring it is. Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. Promise from God. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. Who's them? It's the world. It's these wicked governments. It's this wicked church. It's thieves, murderers, hijackers. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Wow, what a God we serve. What a, what a God we serve when we pray to him and, 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 we, and he comes back and like we prayed on Wednesday night that sometimes he doesn't answer us in the way we want, but he does answer us and his ways are always right. They're always correct. But we, we're not patient. We won't wait. Now, it's got to happen now. It's got to happen right now. 
Oh, I love him so much, Pastor Buckingham, but he's not saved, my girl. Oh, no, 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 no. I've got him. He's just, he's, he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's, no, no, I'll change him. You won't wait. You won't wait on the Lord. This ministry waited two years before we could get back into our beloved Africa. Two years. Now the door's open. Wow, my goodness, did we have, did we have success in northern Uganda six weeks ago? Because we waited. It had nothing to do with me or Isaac or anybody else. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Oh, I just, I just, that's why I love, I just love the name of Jesus Christ. I just love that name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Glorious, mighty, wonderful, wonderful counselor. Oh, Lord Jesus, who is like you. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you and we sit at your feet. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We put our trust and faith in you. Therefore, we shall not fear. Thank you, Father. We hold you in reverence and awe. We don't get familiar with you, Lord Jesus. You're too awesome. Your glory is too great for me to understand. But all I do know, Lord Jesus Christ, I love you. I love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this ministry. We thank you for every saint that's with us, that walks with us. I thank you for favor, blessings, and protection. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.